Hi, in this video, I am going to talk about nonlinear relationship and also we will see how to fit a regression model to a nonlinear data. I will be covering uh, what we will be doing is I will be taking some of the data, visualizing the nonlinear relationship, and then we will try to fit a polynomial function to the nonlinear relationship. At the same time, I will be talking about uh, different polynomial functions that are available uh, over here. Right. So let's get directly into the code and let's get started. What I'm going to do is, as, as with my other statistical thinking videos, I'm going to import pandas to uh, load the data set, uh, numpy, because I want to use some statistical functions of numpy, and then I'm going to use uh, seaborn and matplot to use the data. So uh, let me run this, and I'm going to, basically I've created a uh, summary data out of uh, a uh, loan default data set. The loan default data set is provided by Lending Club. Uh, you can go to Kaggle and you can download the lending club data set but what i have done is i have created an aggregated view of the data set that is easy to visualize rather than going into millions of rows and then trying to plot it so i have a separate video on how to aggregate the data uh, you can click the link on the top and watch it but that is really not mandatory to uh, go through it before coming over here this video can be watched by itself so what i'm doing is i'm loading that loan analysis summary data set that is available in my github repo you can directly use it you can download it from my github repo and use it and i'm calling the pandas.readc3 method and assigning it to an uh, assigning it to a variable that is nothing but a, a pandas data frame let me quickly visualize the data so let me quickly print the data so if you see what I have in this data set is a bunch of FICO score range. Uh, so when, when you're lending a uh, uh, customer, typically like you will evaluate the customer probability of payment using some variables like FICO score, uh, debt to income ratio or his previous delinquency rate, right? So I have a FICO score variable and then I have an loan total. So in each FICO bucket, what I have done is I have already ordered this FICO score into different buckets. So I have 500, 510, 520, 530. So I just created like buckets in an interval of 10. And within each, what is the number of total uh, loans that are there? And what is the debt to income ratio within that bucket? All right. So basically, as the uh, customer basically uh, have better credit score, they may have lower debt to income ratio uh, compared to customer with the uh, uh, lower credit score. Right. So we, we may have higher debt to income ratio. So that's these are the variables I'm going to focus on in this video. So let's start visualizing the data and then we will see the output. So now what I'm doing is first, I am uh, taking from the data frame, I'm taking the FICO score and loan total. As I said, FICO score is a value between uh, 300 to 850. But in this case, Lending Club uh, gives loan to only customer who are above 500. So that, that's why we have value starting from 500. And a loan total is basically how much loan is serviced in each bucket. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating a correlation uh, of those two, these two variables. So it will give me a correlation score, how correlated these two variables are and you can see basically when i see like fico score and loan total it's point not for it's closer to zero that means like that it's not an there is no correlation in this variable so typically uh, the correlation output is minus one to plus one uh, the more towards minus one there is a negative correlation the more towards positive one there's a positive correlation but it is close to zero which tells there is no relationship between these two uh, variables i am using the spearman correlation over here uh, the reason is like spearman correlation is uh, good to visualize data that is ordinal or that has some monotonic relationship and here fico score if you consider uh, basically it's kind of an ordinal data because the more fico score there is a less possibility of default, right? So that's why I'm using it, but you can use Pearson also, which will give you closer results only. And when once I try to visualize the plot of this data, so what I'm doing is I'm using the SNS uh, rec plot, uh, regression plot function, and I'm giving the X value as FICO score and Y value as loan, loan total. And you can see basically the output is completely non-linear. And if I try to figure fit a regression line over here, uh, basically it does not fit the value at all. You, uh, this, this is not something that can be modeled via a regression function so there, there is a lot of non-linearity over here and that's why if you see the correlation coefficient is also like pretty uh, low they're telling like there is no relationship at all so how do we model this particular data now either we can go for a complex model and model it or throw away this variable but uh, how can if we are to model it hypothetically right uh, maybe this two is not a right example but i'm uh, just to uh, show you the non-linear relationship so how do i model this particular data right so that's where uh, polynomial regression comes into play 
So uh, since since you cannot model it by a single uh, straight regression line, we use polynomial terms uh, in an uh, regression model. So polynomial regression is pretty similar to linear regression, but what it does it it allows for a linear combination of input variable and uh, those input variables can be raised to varying degrees. So when I'm having a variable called x, what I am going to do is I'm going to create multiple other variables like x square, x cube, and everything. Uh, right and then i'm going to model it so that the uh, incoming uh, uh, incoming like model can fit that particular non linear data but how do we de- how do i determine in this case like what is the polynomial term i i need to use do i need to use uh, like an uh, square root or uh, sorry do i need to use like an uh, basically uh, uh, cubic function or do i need to use a quadratic function that is the power of 2 or do i need to uh, basically use like an uh, quartic function which is power 4 right how do i find it so let's try to understand the different uh, different uh, functions that are available polynomial functions right before getting that so if you see these are different plots that are available the very first is a constant so basically you don't need anything the the data is completely constant so it's like x equal to 5 you don't have to really model it the second is a linear function where the data points are close to the linear uh, regression line and basically the error is very let you can just draw a linear line but now when it comes to non-linearity, there are multiple things. There are quadratic, you can have cubic, you can have quartic function, or you can have even larger terms uh, than this, right? So if you see the quadratic functions, right? So the quadratic function basically has only one turning point, right? And uh, uh, and if you see like a cubic function, the cubic function has two turning points, right? But the cubic function can have up to two ter- turning points. Sometimes the uh, data only with one turning point, it can look quadratic, but it may not fit an quadratic equation and you may have to use a uh, cubic function as well. It can be either way around. So in this case, if you see like there are one, one bend that is a quadratic function and two bend that's a cubic function. So typically uh, you, uh, you kind of determine your polynomial function by the number of bends and then add one to it. So in this case, there is one bend and you add one to it, it becomes two. So basically you are, uh, you are kind of uh, fitting, fitting a power of two function. That is the quadratic function. And similarly, what you are doing in the next is your two bends. So you are going to protect your cubic function. That, in, that means your polynomial uh, regression uh, power is going to be three. And similarly, quartic function, you have three bends then you are going to kind of give it degrees as 4 in the your polynomial term so this this is this may not be true in all the cases but most of the cases you just calculate the number of bends in data and then add one to it right and uh, again i am telling you like a quadratic function has only one turning point but a cubic function can have up to two turning points so there can be some cases where it's one turning point but the data may not completely fit an quadratic function and that's why you want to go for a cubic function so let's see it with an example with the above data right in the above data if you see over here i have one bend over here i have the second bend coming down i have the third bend over here and then the fourth bend slight bend over here if i if i don't consider this bend yeah then basically this particular uh, data will you will be a straight line and you can see a lot of misclassification over here right so basically i have one bend i have second bend over here i have third bend and i have slight fourth bend over here so i am seeing a four bend so basically i want to give my degree of polynomial as five and then model it Right, let's try with the degree of polynomial as 5. Uh, as I go further, I will show you like how to try with multiple degree of uh, multiple degrees and then just test it out. But uh, you now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply use the NumPy uh, polyfit function, NumPy itself as a uh, polynomial fit function. I'm going to use that and I'm going to give my uh, x variable as FICO score and basically my y variable as loan total. And I'm telling the degree is basically 5 over here, right? And then what I'm doing is I'm just plotting the uh, plotting the output. So in this case, I'm taking the FICO score and loan total. And then I'm just, uh, uh, I get a coefficients out of here. So basically, it will give me multiple coefficient for x to power 5, x to power 4, x to power 3, x to power 2, and then x and then the coefficient and then the intercept itself. I'm just taking that and then I'm plotting it. So if you see the output over here with uh, 5 degree point this is how the fit looks like earlier it was a straight line fit when i was trying to fit an a linear regression here basically you can see it has tried to model the data pretty closely 
one thing you need to remember that is a high possibility the polynomial function might overfit it so you want to have some separate validation and test data set and you want to validate the split which which i am not going to do in this video but something like you want to do it in the real world application so in this case like a polynomial regression uh, basically models a relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable as an nth degree polynomial so that's what it does and here the nth degree is basically phi degree polynomial right uh, so this is one part of it right now i can what i can do is i have fit the function this looks good i can print the coefficients as well over here right so this shows basically this is like uh, the x to power 5 x to power 4 these are coefficients so if you are writing a line equation it is just uh, y equal to your x to power 5 into input in, in, uh, input value and then uh, similarly like uh, input value into power 4 so this is this is the this is the uh, equation that you will use the coefficients right now let me try to visualize another variable over here so here what i am going to do is i am going to kind of visualize uh, the debt to income ratio and loan total and i am again i am going to use the spearman correlation and here if you see here is point not to which again says there is no relationship between two variables right it's closer to zero so now let me draw a regression plot over here now if you see the regression plot uh, again, I'm trying to fit a straight line, but if, if you see here, the boundary is even more complex. So the data goes this way. There is one band, there is two band, there is three band. But but if you see in this space, the data is completely uh, random, right? There is no pattern at all. So basically, we can we can try to fit with the polynomial regression, but we may not uh, get an uh, get get a good uh, fit over here, right? We can try segmentation uh, concept also, where we segment multiple uh, values and then try to fit it. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm trying to uh, fit an uh, I'm going to try and fit an uh, polynomial uh, regression, but in this case, I'm going to use a scikit-learn feature rather than the NumPy polyfit. So in scikit-learn, basically. In pre-processing function, there is an uh, there is an package called uh, polynomial features, and then I'm going to based on that polynomial features, I'm going to model a linear regression model, right? So what I'm telling is my polynomial features over here, I'm giving a degree of four. The reason is there is a one bend over here, there's a one turning point over here, the second turning point over here, and the third turning point. So, uh, this this basically is noise, right? So because there are three turning point, I am just giving the degree as four. And then I am trying to uh, basically create the polynomial features for it. And then I am doing and uh, I am fitting the data for that loan DTA variable and I will get an output. Then I am taking a linear regression model. Let me run this and the next one. Then I am creating a linear regression model and I am taking the polynomial value because I need uh, I need to have the uh, a, x to power 4, x to power 3 values and everything. Uh, and then I am uh, fitting it with the uh, loan total co value, which is my y variable. Right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that model and still pass the same input data. I don't, I have not kept a separate validation data set. So just for the sake of this demo, I'm going to pass the same data set and do my prediction. I can print my model coefficients and model intercepts quickly. So if you see, these are the two model coefficients and model intercepts. Here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot the output now. Uh, with the uh, polynomial degree as 4 and if you see over here with the polynomial degree as 4 uh, actually the fit has not been great there are a lot of um, basically error uh, in each and every uh, fit uh, over here so basically maybe this 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 particular uh, non-linear relationship cannot be directly modeled by a polynomial function now sometimes like you want to basically try with multiple multiple uh, polynomial functions and see what fit the data uh, what i'm doing is i'm just going by an assumption that the number of turns uh, plus one will give me the right polynomial and that works most of the time right but sometimes if you want to run with just multiple polynomial terms what i have done is i have created a, a quick uh, pipeline sky circuit learn pipeline function and i am calling the ridge regression over here so in the pipeline function what i am done is i am giving an polynomial feature degree and the degree is coming uh, over here from the enumeration object that is 2 3 and 4 i'm going to try for degree of 2 degree of 3 and degree of 4 and for each of that i have given the uh, colors over here i want the teal color and yellow green and then the gold color right and then what i'm trying is i'm trying to fit the model so it will basically it's a pipeline object so it will first learn the polynomial feature and then the ridge uh, function and then it's going to predict the learn and then plot, plot it quickly so if i run this so basically the make pipe okay i have not run the previous one let me quickly run this and run it again 
and you can see basically it has uh, kind of uh, done a fit over here this for two and this is for three and this is for four and basically uh, this this if you see over here this cannot be uh, really modeled easily by an polynomial terms as well right maybe you want to uh, do some kind of uh, uh, feature engineering and try it out or do some kind of uh, standardization or do segmentation and then uh, try it out so i just wanted to show like different non-linear relationship and how you can fit it it is always good to standardize the data before running the polynomial terms I have just taken the data and ran it as it is for this demo, but you may want to standardize it in the real world. So that's it about it. Uh, so let the next uh, statistical thinking video, let's talk about like a normal distribution and if the data is not normal distribution, how can you make it to a normal distribution? Thank you very much.